Hello, Hazefest here. This video is going to be on my version 3 script of the Stelter Auto Hotkey for Eden. Now, the script that I'm going to be running today and showing you all the demonstrations on will be for my Nightshade. This is tailor-made for my Nightshade, however, this script can be modified for both the Infiltrator and the Shadow Blade with uh, removing some of the lines that you wouldn't utilize, such as the instant cast abilities um, for the Nightshade, but you can swap those out for like uh, champion level abilities or if you're using any sort of um, procs or DDs on your gear, you can swap those out for those as well. So anything that I use for instant cast damage, you can use for ablatives or whatever your gear would give you, damage adds, whatever you want to use really. You can just bake those right in. So let's go ahead and bring the script onto the screen. This is my new version. What I've done that makes this different from the previous versions is I have annotated everything on the right explaining what things do. The only thing I did not explain is the return feature. The return feature basically is the starting point or reset feature for any string or script that you're running. So whenever you have a return variable, it basically resets and waits for the next command. That's all it does. So at the very top, you have a semicolon preceding the Eden Stelter version three. Anything with a semicolon in front of it basically means invisible to the script. So you can put notes, you can put information here, whatever makes you feel warm and happy inside, you can put in here to help you understand what your script is doing. So moving forward, I will try to do all of my scripts in this fashion to help newer people learn the basics of AutoHotKey. And that's all I really teach is the basics. I don't teach anything fancy. I don't teach anything way over the top. I try to make things simple, dumbed down, and easy for people who have no idea what they're doing. All right. So if you have no idea what a script is, never seen a script, are afraid of AutoHotKey because it uses scripts, I'm going to walk you through, hold your hand, and help you understand what you're looking at, how to read it, how to make your own. So after return, we have use hook. Use hook is the beginning of any script or string. We're only going to use it at the very top and at the very bottom, we have use hook off. This is the end of your script. So everything is between use hook on and use hook off is your script. This line here, if the window is active, AHK class Dayok MWC. This is the name of the window, Dayok MWC, according to AutoHotKey. If this window is open, meaning if Dark Age of Camelot is running, this script will work. If your game crashes, if you quit, if you go to another game, this script will stop working. So if you want to leave Dark Age of Camelot, forget to turn your script off, go play something else, it's not going to interfere with your gameplay. But if you leave your script running, come back to Dark Age of Camelot, it's immediately going to start working. So make sure you turn your script off if you switch characters. That's the only reason you would need to do it. But if you play one character and you don't really switch a whole lot, you can leave your script on. However, I recommend turning it off just to have the habit of turning it off when you need to. So a new part of version three is I've put everything into sections. So everything that deals with mouse features will be in the mouse button section. I will have a melee and instant styles abilities section. I will have a weapon swap section that will show you how to swap all your weapons. And I have my famous poison script that will swap your weapons, apply poisons to multiple weapons, and I'll show you how all that works. At the very bottom, I have the auto hotkey automatic script suspend and resume feature. Okay, so basically everything below this point you would want to have in all of your scripts because what it will do is it will automatically suspend and resume your script whenever you are chatting in Dark Age of Camelot. So any button that accidentally opens your chat window will put a little feature on your screen that says script suspended. What this means is you've hit a key and now you can start typing and it will not interrupt your 
communications. Because if you don't have a suspended script and you try to type, you'll type gibberish because whatever your cue binds are hitting, it's just gonna be blah, 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 blah on your screen. So I found this out through people in the community that shared this with me. This feature is fantastic. Not only does it suspend your script when you're typing, but if you're uh, interrupted while you're typing, you can hit enter to send it. Or if you're typing and you get attacked, you can hit escape and you can immediately start going back into combat. Very handy feature. We also have a feature where you can use copy and paste. So let's say you wanted to copy something from another window or the internet. You can copy that and you can use the Windows Paste command, Control V in Dark Age Camelot. So I go in here, I open up my chat log, I hit Control V. It has pasted exactly what I have copied in here. And then you can just send that in. So very handy features. I really enjoy those. I appreciate the person who sent those to me way back when. Um, but now let's go through everything that's in this script and show you exactly what it does in the game. So I will put the script on the screen. We're just gonna focus on the left side information, okay? We're just gonna show you the stuff that's gonna be highlighted and what it does. So this right here is my mouse button. Let me show you what this does, okay? I have it set to my side mouse button, which is my side mouse button one. You can have one of two. If you have a multi-button mouse, you will have to go into your mouse software and set up your additional key buttons on the side mouse to be keyboard keys. And then that way you can set your keyboard keys in your script. And when you press your side mouse button, it will act as you are pressing those keys instead. Or if you don't set the keyboard keys on the mouse software as the side mouse buttons, those additional side mouse buttons will not help you at all. Because the game is so old, the UI only recognizes side mouse button one and side mouse button two, because that's all that existed back in 2000. All right, so X button one, what this does is it allows us to put a spell and a face and a camera reset all on the same key. So if you're a spell caster or if you're a nightshade like I am, you have a ranged spell. Um, so if you want to utilize uh, kiting or anything like that, where you're using snap back off and keeping an eye on your enemy and you want to attack them immediately, what you do is you hit your side mouse button and it resets your camera, it faces the target and immediately begins casting because face roots you in place. It doesn't necessarily root you, but it makes you stop moving. So I'm watching this guy. I see this mob or this player. He's turned off to go attack someone else. I can immediately start casting on him if I don't want to re-engage in melee. But that's what that does. It allows you to get the perfect view on your enemy and then reset and start attacking them. All right, I don't recommend that you have this on every single one of your spell keys because you wanna have some spatial awareness of what's going on around you. But in this case, I only have the one spell and it's good to show you what it can do. All right, All right let's go over the melee styles and instant ability section of this guide. So what I have is a list of information here, okay, for my one key that I have highlighted on the screen right now. We're moving over to the combat dummies that actually fight back so that you can see this in action. So when people start using auto hotkey, the number one thing they ask me is when I go to use my styles, I miss the first attack every time. Why is that? Very simple. Eden's server reads your key presses so frequently that when you go to initiate combat in melee, it will only accept the first two, maybe the first three send key requests. So that means it would read sh uh, shift down, shift up, B, F8, and um, the equal sign, right? So when I go to attack this guy, I'm probably more likely 80 or 90% going to fail. So when I come up here to hit this guy, you can see that he blocked my attack. Okay, well that's cool and all. You can see that my ass bite worked that time because I was already in melee combat, the swing timer was already in effect. 
However, when you stay out of combat and then you go to attack somebody next time, I evaded so my hamstring went off. However, if you don't evade, you can see there I failed to execute hamstring perf uh, perfectly. So it read my hamstring input and then it never got down far enough to do asps bite in the same key press. So what happens is it'll read my reactionals, which is my uh, after evade, but it will not read, I fail to am uh, execute hamstring perfectly. So asps bite is barely reaching uh, and it actually attacks the second time around. So what's happening is the server is reading my inputs, but it's not reading my inputs fast enough. This time on the third or fourth attempt here, it actually landed my anytime style because it read it between the pulses of which the server is reading your key inputs. Okay, every server reads the key inputs differently. Atlas reads it differently, Phoenix read it differently, and Eden seems to be more responsive than the other two servers, uh, allowing you to have almost no key buffer whatsoever. Uh, the only exception is once you are already in melee combat and your swing timer is in effect because you have at least 1.5 seconds to press all those buttons at between every swing. So when your swing timer is in effect, your script functions normally or flawlessly. However, when you go to open up on an enemy, it may fail. The way around this is just drop all your follow-ups and just have your after evade and your anytime. Just have your side and your back whichever you're going to use. Just have your Leviathan and your Slam, if you're a Reaver, right? Or just have your side stun and your back snare or whatever the heck you want, right? So you only have two styles on things that you want to open up with that have a high chance of landing, like your positionals and your any times. That's the best advice I can give you on Eden. Once you're already in combat and you're attacking, you're good to go. But if you're out of combat for five seconds or whatever your swing timer is, it's going to reset and you're going to have to re-engage with your two styles that you want to open up with. That's the best advice I can give you. However, let's see one in action. So I'm already in combat, right? So I push my one button. You saw my spells go off. So the one button does my after evade, my after evade follow-up, and then it uses um, my anytime style. So whenever I don't evade, I'm using my anytime styles. I evaded, there goes hamstring, and then leaper. So why did I put hamstring before leaper in my sequence? The short answer is better defensive um, capabilities. So let's just look at that real quick. Leaper gives you a low defense bonus, but does high damage. Gives you a medium bonus, which is the same as Hamstring. Hamstring is a high damage bonus, a medium to hit, and a medium defense. So that means if I'm rotating Hamstrings before my Leaper, I will evade with Hamstring two, maybe three times, and then if I don't evade again, I'll go into Leaper but I'll be better defended spamming hamstring and then going into leaper later than I would if I just did hamstring leaper, hamstring leaper. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. And if I don't evade at all and I don't have leaper off of a hamstring, then it will just result in any time styles of asps bite. Asps bite. Asps. Bite. So the F3 is my asps bite, and then my page up and my comma are my two instant spells that are on long cooldowns. So I just rotate my instant cast abilities right into my styles. That way, it whenever they're up, they immediately just go off. That way, if I'm doing a one on one combat, it's much better. However, the detriment or downside to this is if you want more control in your RVR aspects to 
hit players that are casting from afar and you can't quite get to them so you want to interrupt you're not gonna be able to do that unless the skill is up and you're spamming your one button or your five key because I put this also on my five key hopefully that helps let's go over two, which is your side and back styles okay so if you look at my hotbar, these are my actual cue binds for auto hotkey, right? It's on page five, and we're looking at five, six, and seven, which is my side style, my follow up, and then my back style, okay? So since there is a key press between my side and my back, there's a high failure rate here. So you can see I can land my side style because that's what we lead with, but if I try to come behind the target with Sidewinder on the bar, I failed to execute my ice storm perfectly. Let's try again. I landed my back style that time. Let's try again. I failed to execute my attack. So you get like a 50% chance. So whenever your style fails on the first key press, it landed that time. If it fails on the first key press and you let go, it usually cues up the style that is your fourth style after so I failed it's going to use a black widow automatically on my second attack so yeah you can see that it worked there it worked from that distance that's weird it failed and then it's going to use a, a black widow whenever I let go of the key best advice I can give you is just limit it to two styles your side and your back uh, if you're a stealther class, you can get away with putting three styles on there because by the time you use your side or back stun uh, styles, you've stunned the target and you can get the positionals for free. If you're using anything more than two styles to open up in combat, which means your, your, your weapons are sheathed, you're not doing anything, I recommend only two styles. So I take Sidewinder off the bar and it improves my ability to land my attacks except when I straight up miss but there it is so let's take a look at our back stab and our perf inputs so on my three key I have stick and then I have perfect artery and backstab the reason that I have stick and perf and backstab on the same key is you can't use the follow-ups there's my perf run away and then we'll come in for a backstab on the same key. Coming in. Boom, backstab. So, there you go. For creeping death, stunning stab, thigh cut, all of your follow ups to your openers for perf and backstab, I have those on number four. And on number four, I have stick, pull out my main hand weapon, creeping death, thigh cut, instant DD, one instant damage over time, champion level buff one, two, three, and four. So I have four buffs that go online. So once I land my perf, look up in the buff bar up there, and you'll see all of my buffs come online when I use my follow up. So let's go in and show you what this looks like. So we come in, we perf the enemy. Creeping death, he is now stunned. And we just go right into back styles. Or we can go into side styles, whichever you prefer. Whatever, whatever you'd like to do. And then when he comes out, we would swap to our evade and our anytime styles. So that way we have pretty much just everything possible until you either A, stun the enemy again, or B, kill them. So that's pretty much everything. Let's take a look at the next thing and uh, see what that looks like. All right, we're back at the hitback dummies to look at number five, which is going to be our after evade and anytime style, similar to our one key, except we're going to use different styles. Okay, so we're still going to have the instant DD. We're still going to have the instant dot. We're still going to have stick and swap to main hand weapon. And then we're going to use two different styles for after evade. Instead of using hamstring and leaper, we're going to use diamond back and diamond spider, which is my eight second stun off of an evade. So I go right in. We're in combat. I've evaded. I pop my ability. 
There is my first attack. He stunned me. So now I have to wait for my evade again. There's my evade. There's my first style. There's my stun. And then I can go right into back styles and side styles and whatever else. And the whole time that I'm doing this, it's also going to allow me to do um, my instant cast abilities. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully uh, you kind of understand how all the melee stuff works as well as the possibilities of melee. You can put anything that's an instant cast or anything that's uh, a charge item that has an instant cast on with your styles. So if you're not a nightshade, you can still use the instant abilities of your items to give yourself ablatives, heals, potions, whatever. I don't know why you want to put a potion on a style, but you usually want to use something that has a low cooldown, like your CL abilities, and uh, you know, hopefully that makes something, you know, a few key presses lighter, so to speak. Um, let's go ahead and go into the weapon swaps since we're here. So the weapon swapping section, uh, I went ahead and put the macros for you on the side. You can't really see them, uh, but I'll just pull this onto the screen so you can see it. So I've put the actual macros, you can just copy and paste these right in. If you're using my script, you can just paste them right in with the control V. So you can just copy this line. Go back to Dark Age Camelot, open your chat, paste it in, and there you go, instant macro. Mind blown! I know, it's cool, right? Let's keep going. So, for these swap macros, uh, I have my six key, and what my six key does, if you watch my log on the right here, I'll go ahead and increase the size of the font so that you can see it. That's probably big that's what she said we'll go with 14 so I hit my six key you can see that it swaps both my main hand and my off hand right so now I hit my seven key so we've just done six which sends C and K seven same thing you can see in this in the log here the second Zen seven you can see that it wields both my weapons at the same time and same thing for eight so six seven and eight swap between my four weapon sets, the two in my hand, my backup two, my backup three and four, my backup five and six. Now, what I did was I took it a step further and I made my poison script. So, six, seven, and eight are essentially the same thing, but they all have different hotkeys. That's the only difference. And the macros are here if you want to just copy and paste this into the game and then Q-bind them to the same. You can do that. You'll just have to change some stuff in the slash keyboard settings. Let's look at this big bastard right here. This is my poison script. I was doing some testing. This was the creme de la creme. This is the very top portion, the cake topper of the script, so to speak. This was a beast to figure out. So what I did was I've made it shift Q to poison my weapons. I had to put shift up because what was happening is my fat stubby fingers don't move like they used to and while I was holding shift Q it would use shift modifiers for some of the abilities like shift C, shift K, shift O, shift Y. So in order to uncluster my sausage fingers I use the send shift up command. So what that tells the system is that the send key has been released and to fire everything through. So that prevents accidental shift commands. Now we go into send F9, which is my infection. End is my life bane. And then I have my weapon swaps. And then I go into life bane and then weapon con debuff poison. And then I do weapon swaps. And then I go into infection and weapon con debuff for my third set. And then for my fourth set, I go into life bane and strength, which is L. And then I swap back to my original two. You do not have to swap back to your original two if you don't want to. So these lines are kind of pointless. But so you can just put the same poisons as your starting weapons on your ending weapons and you're good to go. I'm special. I wanted to swap back to my original set, so that's why I put the met in the bottom here. Not necessary. It's extra fluff. But it feels good when you start with your original two 
and that way you know exactly what poisons you're applying every time when you hit 6, 7, and 8. And that's the full script. That's everything. So, you've seen it all. It works pretty good. Now, I'm not gonna lie. Eden's auto hotkey feel, feels a little janky if your script's not polished. I've tried to polish my script as much as possible. However, the big issue with the styles not working properly on the initial combat, it may be able to be bypassed if you don't have the first couple lines be stick, swap to main hand weapon. I like those personally, that's just me. If you take those out, you probably still get the same effect where it's reading from when you hit your first style to when you're sending your second, third, fourth style, it's only gonna capture the first two or three. This is from my testing alone. If you've figured out a way to do this without having a delay, feel free to let me know. However, in the current uh, situation of no delay, no sleep timer, nothing crazy like that, no sort of automation whatsoever, where if you push a button, something happens, that's all I teach. Um, if you find a way around this issue that is not a delay or a sleep or any sort of automation, hit me up. I'll share it with the world, promise. Uh, if it's something you wanna to keep to yourself, hey, more kudos to you. There's a lot of people that are much better auto hotkey than I am, just keeping it real, right? But hopefully this script and me breaking it down the way I have will help you understand how auto hotkey affects your character, your gameplay. And this is mostly for people who just want to be lazy, who don't want to press 39, 40 keys every time they get on their character. This is for people who want to control their camera a little easier, add stick to their string, you know, their styles and stuff. Uh, helps people with disabilities. I got a lot of people that have partial paralysis or uh, some sort of medical issue and um, you know it helps them so much and they are so grateful so it's not necessarily people who want to cheat people who want to you know get the advantage on their on their other people plan you know I mean there are those people but that's not why I do this I do what I do because I learned auto hotkey because other people I was fighting was using it I wanted to understand what the hell was happening better. So that's what I started doing. This is my full Q bind list, by the way. I'm gonna put this on the screen so that you can see what my character's Q binds are in case you have any questions. Can I make this bigger? I can. Let's do this then. Let's put all of my shit on the screen. There you go. That's everything. If you can read that whole thing, that's all of it. Oh, whoops. Hang on a second, let me fix this real quick. All right, I have put my full Q bind list on the screen for you while I'm going over the next few things as my closing statements, okay? So if you wanna, you know, set your Q binds to what mine are, this is how you do it. That's as dark as it gets, really. Ugh. All right. So while I'm going over the next few things, I'm going to put my Qbind list on the screen for you so that you can see it. You can just, if you go into uh, your windows, there's a little snip, snipping tool. You can just hit the windows button, go to snipping tool or type snipping tool. It'll pull this up. You hit new, and then you can just make a copy of this just like that. And you can save it and go over it without having to pause the video and keep coming back. You just you can just save it right here. Save as a file. Hopefully that helps. But I'll leave it on. Auto hotkey is not cheating. Okay, there are people who use auto hotkey to cheat. Eden's rules are very simple. Do not have loops. Do not have delays such as delay set key delay or sleep or anything like that. Anything that has a break in your script via the code is cheating don't have any sort of automations, and they said don't broadcast your keystrokes. Please let me know what broadcasting is because I have no clue what they're talking about. I try to keep things simple. I keep things dumbed down for the people who have no clue 
about scripting, auto hotkey, someone who's just curious, right? Someone who wants to understand what the hell's happening, what it does, why is it so popular? Why do they say it's cheating? Why is it overpowered? It's none of those things, okay? It is a, it is a way to fight the UI's jankiness and the old ass mechanics of this game, right? So newer style games are gonna have things that are uh, more innovative and will help you, you know, do exactly what you wanna do. Most of World of Warcraft has most of what we're doing here already baked in with the macro system they have. So basically this is helping you get up to speed with other MMORPGs. Now you're still gonna have the old school crew who says it's cheating and that you're not, you know, they're the purest community. I like those guys. I used to be one of them, okay? Don't hate on them because they're not using auto hotkey and don't hate on the people that are using it. I hope you learned something. I don't do this because, you know, it's gonna make me popular overnight. Dark Edge Camelot's not that big of a game. I'm not really gonna make money off of this. So um, the reason I'm doing it is to help the community, uh, community which I like. I've come back to it uh, about five years ago when Phoenix was out. Right when the, well, I guess the pandemic hit. So 2020 is when I discovered Phoenix. I mean, I tried to put my document creation background to use here and, and try to spread information which makes me feel good and it helps people learn. And I like talking Dark Edge Camelot with people as well as Auto Hotkey because it, it gives my brain something to do. I appreciate you guys for watching this, I do. You know, if you wanna subscribe and follow, that's great. I don't really push for it. Um, I don't really beg for, you know, Twitch stream viewers or subscriptions on Twitch and stuff like that. I just do it because I like the community. I like having people who are into the same thing that I am and just having a good time, you know? I'm Hayes Fest. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.